I don't anticipate it being an issue. Fighting is not something that we want to accept. It's not part of the rules of the game. I've explained that before. I'll explain it again. It's training camp on the first day of pads. He's trying to set a tone. Those things don't bother me so much as long as we can. We know that we got to play within the rules and we got to protect our, protect our teammates. And I think we got it figured out after that. So uh, I don't anticipate any further issues with it. Um, those things in, in a much more colorful tone. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's football. I, I don't mind guys setting a tone with the intensity ramped up. And we just got to understand that, that we, we can play to the edge and we can still play within the rules. And fighting is a penalty. It's usually an ejection. It hurts our team. We can't have that. Um, I think they're all aware of that. And that's essentially what, was, what the message was in that, in that huddle. I think your defense did maybe first game pass and bring good. the fight maybe to the, to the offense a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, there was, you know, we had some good work as the practice went on. They, they came out out of the gates pretty hot and did a nice job that first period. Um, you know, I think we got a good defense. I think those guys play hard. I think the scheme is good. They're coached hard. Um, it's it's fun to compete against them, you know, and I think that it's going to make us better on offense as well. And I thought offensively we played better as the practice went on too, as our guys settled in a little bit more. Um, you know, you get used to it's, it's a lot easier to come out on the attack sometimes on defense. And so we, we settled back in, and I thought did a better job as the practice went along. Pressure that they, you're kind of comfortable with, though, with like the, as Jimmy said, the defense was getting after the yeah. pretty well. Yeah, there was some. I mean, there was some that were good and there was some that were bad. It's, you know, it, it sometimes looks worse than on the sideline when you're watching it than assignment-wise and you see what's happening. But, um, yeah, there was some. We, we were soft in protection a few times. We gave up a couple free runners. Um, that's why we're out here. Yeah, I'll, when I watch the tape, I'll, I can give you more information tomorrow once I see it all. But, um, yeah, it'll be good. Be good film to watch and be good to evaluate them. How do you like the way a guy like Kenneth Murray, you know, seems to come alive even more when you put these bags on? I mean, that's that's why we that's why we liked him. Um, is he's, he looks the part? He plays physical. He's a downhill player. Um, and then when the pads come on him, you, you feel the physicalness. Um, you feel his ability to run and hit. He's a, he's had a really nice start to camp, um, and he's he's everything I thought he would be from what having played against him before. And I think this scheme suits him uh, and suits his his skill set. Uh, well, so I think you're going to continue to see him, I think, grow. You see the way he's communicating a lot. He's kind of the traffic cop, pre-snap yeah. and everything. Is that something you guys kind of expected, or is that a pleasant surprise? Uh, I think we expected it to some degree. I mean, you never know because uh, we don't, you know, we don't know him when we signed him in free agency and got to know him over the course of OTAs. And now he's he's taking on that leadership role and doing a really nice job. Uh, he's dialed into the to the defense and how to communicate it. And so that part's been, um, you know, I wouldn't say a surprise, but but it's been good to see. Matthew Jackson helped himself getting two picks today in the first batting practice. Yeah, he had a nice day. You know, it's good to see guys that, uh, you know, are fighting for jobs and fighting for roster spots, uh, taking advantage of opportunities. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys. He's trying to find a niche and find a role. And the more production you have on the ball, the, the harder it is to ignore guys like that. And so when they make plays and have production, um, you know, you kind of want to see him to do more. And so you get opportunities to, to continue to play and, and get more chances to make more plays. And so uh, it's good to see guys like him step up. Do you have the resources at Edge to, to manage with Arden heading for, for six games out? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the news. Um, it's, it's a league thing. I don't really have much to comment on until that comes out from the league. But, um, yeah, we'll see. You know, I don't know. It's not something that you wanted to hear. Um, but... We're gonna. We don't really have a choice. We got to go play football with who we have, and if we can find someone else, we will. And if we can't, then we got to play with what we have. So um, that's sort of where we're at. Do you feel like Carol Landry just coming back today? I know you said he lost a little weight. Looks like he didn't have to be here. No, he looked great. You know, he looked great. He, he was just he's coming off an illness, and when your weight drops, it just it increases your chances for potential injuries, particularly soft tissue. And so uh, we just make sure he was back to, to his normal playing weight and back out here. He looked like the Harold that that I've uh, played against before, and it was good to see him out there. Yeah, that's that's kind of his mo. He's he's a hyper competitive player. That's what we liked about him coming out, um, and he's got this the the skill set to to be competitive, and he's going to get plenty of chances with with Lajarius being managed and Cheeto being out to to show what he's all about. And um, so far, I've liked that part of his game. He's he's an aggressive minded player, um, and as he gets the techniques down and feels more comfortable in the scheme, I think uh, it'll be fun to watch him grow over the course of the next few weeks. Say maybe go out and get another edge. Is that something this time of year that you can be involved in, or is that something you do kind of trust random staff to go out to you guys? 
No, we're, we're involved in all of it together. You know, they, they, they do all the legwork on that stuff. They, they do the evaluations and are aware of the markets and who's available. So um, they do all that, and then we'll have a conversation about uh, with me and Denard or on offense if it's an offensive player, you know, where they fit and what we'd use them for and if, if, it's, a, if it's a fit for us. And so they do the legwork, and, and we have conversations about it. So it's, it's still pretty back and forth. When you look at the success that the defense has had in some of these early practices, and yeah. that's keeping in mind Snead, Cheeto, these guys have been away. I guess how much more confidence and excited does that make you about infusing these guys into the group that's already had success? Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, you know, depth is a, is a critical part of success in the NFL, and if you got guys that can step up and play um, at, at a starting level when you need them to, um, that's really encouraging. And so to have to see these guys have all these opportunities that they're only going to get better with those guys being out and they're only going to get more reps than they would have gotten. And so uh, you got a real chance to improve your depth. Um, you have a real chance to see guys get more and more opportunities and see what they do with them. And so that part's been really encouraging um, to see that group of guys on defense, you know, really take advantage of, of, the, of the opportunities they've been given um, and, and play pretty well. The first day of pads maybe catch your eye where they hadn't necessarily up until today? Uh, no, not yet. I'll, I'll, once we get, we need like two two days, maybe four days in pads before I can really make any uh, any judgments like that. But it'll be good to watch this tape. I think there's a lot to, to take from it um, and to see from a, from a coaching standpoint. In the spring, you talked about the importance of the offense being on time. Mm -hmm. So far, do you feel satisfied with the timeliness and is that something that's going to improve as they're thinking less about what they're doing, you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's There's been plenty of things that have been really good. Um, I think for whatever reason around here, these the bad things get magnified quite a bit. But um, there's been plenty of really good things that I've been very happy with. Um, and so that's that's just part of it. We're still growing. we got a young quarterback. we got young linemen. Um, we're still working through the process of it. And so uh, we're on track. We're doing all the things we need to do the right way. Um, and we'll keep coaching and we'll keep improving. So um, I'm not... I don't have any real concerns at this point. I mean, we're we're doing what we're expected to do. I think for the most part. You've had some, you know, some of your front liners uh, miss a little time at DB. Who are some guys that maybe stepped up, taking advantage of little reps? You think uh, on the defense? Right, defensive back. Uh, I think all of them, really. I mean, um, to see, you know, Matt Jackson make some plays today. Uh, to see Trey Avery really kind of challenge some of our top receivers and do a really good job. Um, you know, Jarvis Brownlee as a young player playing in there has been good. Um, I think all those guys have, have, you know, had opportunities to step up. And again, there's going to be plenty more of them. Um, and so the key is going to be how well can we sustain it and how consistent can we stack these days? Is it, are we riding a roller coaster where we're making good plays and giving up big ones? Uh, or are we consistently making the, the right plays at the right time? So um, that's the fun part about training camp. Really being solid because he hasn't made many mistakes. Mm -hmm. At some point, in order to, to win that position, do you have to be more than just a guy who doesn't make mistakes much? Oh, sure. You got to play well. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's there's a you know there's a yeah you have to be able to go out and play at an NFL starting level. And um, you know, again, for John, he's not really done that yet, so we don't know. And we're going to find out. He's going to play plenty in the preseason. We're going to get plenty of work out here. Um, and then you know, Nick. Nick will be back hopefully here on Friday, um, so Nick will get some reps in there, and, and we're still rotating guys. You guys see it. I mean, there's 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 position battles, and they're getting even cracks at it. And so um, as those guys start moving more with the pads on, and the rotation starts to happen more often, um, we'll see who rises. And that's 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 where we are on the right side of the offensive line, and, and there's going to be opportunity there, and we'll see who takes advantage of it. Will today in terms of his command of the, the command of the huddle and his pocket presence under duress. Yeah, good. I mean, he had we had a. One or two tough ones. We had a screen that was set up that that versus an a interior cross dog blitz that was tough to to pick up and get off. So that one wasn't great. But um, other than that, it's been pretty good. You know, there's there's he's facing a lot of different looks. Um, I think there's a lot on his plate, which is good. And he's only going to settle in further as he gets more experience doing it. So um, I've been pleased with what he's done. There's plenty of room for improvement. You know, there's a couple of throws I think that he'd like to have back today. But uh, for the most part, he's he's been doing what he's supposed to do as a starting quarterback, managing the huddle and getting the offense running and called and all that stuff. That part's been good, and uh, we'll just keep working to improve. With the offensive line, how much of it is taken what happened today and then seeing how they improve off of what they did the first day of pads, either next week or yep. uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of it. You know, most of the time, um, especially this first day, you know, the you see uh, the technique sort of falls apart because they're just their pads are on and it changes and they settle back in and they start playing better and so it's all it's always going to be about 
uh, not repeating mistakes. And so if you've made a mistake, you make a technique error, it's, it's how quickly can you get it fixed and how quickly can you then execute it again in the same spot. And so that's the name of the game. That's, that's the guys that are going to play are the guys that kind of every day, if they make a mistake, they don't repeat it. And so um, that's, a, that's an important part of stacking consistency for those guys. And that's ultimately what you're looking for is, is a group of five that's going to be pretty consistent, that you know what you're going to expect and they know what to do and how to do it. So um, that's the fun part about putting pads on. You said Josh Wiley was one of the guys you were excited about as he's going into camp. It seems like he keeps showing up out here as well. Have you been equally excited that now that you've got a chance to see him? I sure have. Josh is, Josh is really um, coming into his own. Uh, as a tight end, and I think that he's starting to understand the position better. Um, he's starting to understand the blocking part of it because there's a blocking piece to that as well. Um, but he's he's got good a knowledge of the pass game, and he keeps showing up. He catches balls. He makes plays. Um, and the more of those guys that we can have, the better. So he's he sort of lived up to my excitement in terms of uh, what I was hoping to see from him. And again, long way to go, but uh, he's had a nice start to his training camp. About you know he could run when he got here for camp. You know could run forever and all of that, but yep. until. The pads are on. You can't pretend to be in football shape. How long does it take for guys once they're practicing like this to be in what you consider yeah, football? Yeah, prob- I would say you probably get you get comfortable with your pads on again and, and don't feel the weight of carrying them and, and being able to run and all that stuff. I'd say it takes about a, a week's worth of time, you know, four to five practices before you really settle in um, and feel like you're playing football. And then every day that goes by, it gets better. But it, it takes a couple of practices, I think, for guys to really settle in and be in shape um, to go play. And again, we're talking going plays, 10, 12 plays in a row and, and seven, eight, nine drives in a game. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get there. The rest and schedule make- similar to Snead or was today just an off day for an injury day? Uh, Jamal was on a, he's on a management, so he was off today. Malik and Mason, how do you kind of weigh their days against each other as, you know, it seems like sometimes one is yeah. better days than the other. What are you looking for for them to set themselves apart? Yeah, I think that's a, a really, really fun competitive battle. I mean, those guys have both really played good football when they've played. And so they're doing things the right way. They're managing the offense. They're finding completions. They're making plays when they're presented. Um, so really been happy with both of them. And that's going to be one that's going to separate probably by how they play in the preseason. Um, you know, that's going to be the final, the, the final tilt one way or the other just based on their performances when the game is, is for real. Um, but they've really had a nice start to camp. And, again, for quarterbacks, it's always going to be is can you keep stacking days like that? Can you have the good days? Or are, we, are we riding a roller coaster? And so uh, both of them thus far, though, have not done that. They've been pretty consistent with their uh, performance, and it's been really good to see. I think it helps, um, you know, it's kind of a behind the behind the curtain thing, but it helps everybody else on the offense who's trying to present themselves too. When a quarterback can make throws and let guys win and have have chances on the ball, now everybody else has a chance to compete for those jobs they're up for too. So uh, having good backup quarterback playing camp is good for the backup quarterback battle, but it's also good for the rest of the guys trying to compete for spots that um, they got good guys putting the ball where they're supposed to so they have a chance to make plays. Do you last one keep like a, in your head a practice like this? You talk about it takes about a week before they really get used to the pads. Do you look at a practice like today and start moving guys in your head up and down depth charts or maybe a guy that's fighting for a spot on the team? Or is it something that you want to see how they grow over the two weeks or the next three weeks? Probably the latter, a little bit more. Um, I I would say weeks is probably not the word but probably days you know where you get a chance to you know let a guy practice and, and see if they can stack you know two days in a row or or three four good practices and then if not then you know we're, we're quick to quick to let somebody else have an opportunity if it's not up to the standard that we're looking for so uh weeks is probably not the right word but uh, you know you try to give guys a chance to to settle and and have some sort of rhythm to their game before you start rolling them in and out all the time but um you know, we, we don't have a ton of time. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like we got three months before we play. I mean, we're playing pretty quickly here. So, um, you know, the urgency has got to pick up, too. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Uh, I feel like you kind of really don't really get into football shape to the first game, really. Uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to simulate a real true game, but we're going to work our hardest. But it's, it won't be until, like, the first game. What, what's it like putting on pads for the first time, and what's also what's it like in kind of learning to practice together, not trying to cross the line as far as pushing yeah. each other goes? We always want to get to the edge, but you don't want to cross that, that edge or that line. Uh, that's something we got to learn with a new team, new group of guys. We're all competitive, so and we're going to push each other every, every day. I know, especially up front. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have some battles, but we got to know. Man, we throw a punch in the game, you're out the game, it's over. So, 
Yeah, something we got to learn to get better at. A good sign on the first day? Is that something concerning when you have team leaders going to blow I don't think it's concerning at all. It's, you know, that's, that's, that's what you want. This is football. Like, we expect chippiness, especially O-line, D-line. We need that, that uh, fiery uh, personality on the field. So I don't think it's a bad sign at all. We just got to know not to cross the line. Did you go into the day kind of expecting something like that to happen? Yeah, kind of. I mean, we know we had kind of been – We've been going at it even without pads. So, I mean, you kind of always expect that on the first day, really the first few weeks really of camp going against each other until we get into preseason. So, kind of expect it, but uh, I don't think it's too much of a bad thing. You know, but we, like I said, we've got to know not to cross that line. Ryan, did you guys expect the defense to throw as many different looks at you, blitzes and things as they did on first day in pads? Yeah, we've been seeing that since OTAs. And if you see uh, uh, you know, Coach Denard's background coming from Baltimore, that's what they do. So uh, we've been preparing for a lot of, a lot of different looks. And it's going to help us going into the season because I don't think it's going to be many th uh, third down looks that's going to challenge us as much as they've challenged us so far. Yeah. Very intelligent. Uh, can tell him something one time, and he he has it down packed. And uh, I can kind of feel that chemistry coming along already. Uh, kind of similar to what I had with uh, Quinn Miners in Denver. Uh, similar players, in my opinion. Uh, very smart, uh, motivated. So I I look forward to continuing to grow with, with Pete. Where are you guys at on the level of communication you feel right now? We getting there. We getting there. Uh, we still got. You know, JC's still a young guy. Pete's, you know, even though he's so intelligent, he's only going to year two. Um, OJ, he's going to year two. So we, we still kind of uh, getting there. And it's a completely different terminology terminology what I'm used to and what they've done last year. So, uh, yeah, we're getting there. We, we've taken strides, but we got a long ways to go. On top of that, um, just the communication between you and Will Levis, you know, how would your assessment of calling out protections and being – you know, on the same page. How's that coming along so far? It's been good. Uh, one thing I love about Will, man, he like, he's so motivated and he wants to be great. Like, every morning I come here and early, he's already here. So he knows exactly what's going on up front. Um, he knows what we should be doing. So the communication has been good uh, so far. And yeah, I love what I'm seeing. I guess uh, chemistry developing with the box too, and you guys get on oh, yeah. the same page. Yeah, again, we, we, we have a long ways to go, but we're getting there. Uh, same thing as Will. They know what to expect from us up front. They know the concepts we're running, uh, where the double teams are going to be. So uh, it's coming along with, you know, Tajay, Tony, all the other guys. So it's been good so far, but we got a lot of work to do. What did you do to get ready for camp and anything different now compared to what you did earlier in your career? Yeah. Uh, so I tried, I think two years, two or three years ago, I started to get into hot yoga. Uh, just to get a little extra you know, cardio in, extra burn in uh, in the evening. So hot yoga, uh, I want to find, you know, next next off season when I'm down here, I'll find a boxing or uh, a boxing place, try to try to get that going. I started that last summer. So uh, hot yoga, boxing, just trying to do something to get ready for this heat. How much does the, the handwork of boxing play into the handwork of, of being an offensive lineman in the league? I think it's key because, you know, you got to have fast hands. Uh, the way D linemen are constantly working their hands and working their strikes, we got to do the same thing. So um, yeah, I think it's big, and I think it can be a critical factor in a successful O-line play. How do you kind of look at that competition on your right side, a lot of different guys cycling in, and, and how that's kind of building? I think it's been good. Uh, we got a lot of guys taking reps. Um, trying to build chemistry with, with different guys. You never know what happens on Sunday. So, yeah, I, I think we, they've been pushing each other uh, every day in Indy and meeting room. So all those guys have been doing well, uh, showing flashes and continuing to grow. Did you play much in preseason in your, in your career? Yeah, uh, so first my first year of COVID, we didn't have preseason at all. Second year, played pretty much the first half of every game. Uh, and then third year, we didn't play at all. And last year with Sean Payton, we played about eight to ten plays. So I, I actually enjoy playing. I think it's needed for me personally. I, I like to get out there. So yeah, I hope we we do play a good bit this, this preseason. You mentioned 
mentioned, we'll just feed on that. You mentioned that you often don't feel game shape until week one. Does playing in those preseason games help in that regard? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But you don't really. It's a little different, from, you know, from preseason to week one. Like that first drive of week one, you always kind of gassed, uh, and then you kind of get used to it after that. So preseason, I mean, it's, it's good, but week one is a little different. Thanks. Um, it felt good out here. Um, as you've seen, um, high energy, um, high effort from everybody. You know, it was a good start to you know some padded practices. Like for you working with, uh, I guess some some so many DBs and trying to get on the same page with those guys. Um, it's been good. I mean, we've had great work. Um, this last week was a good start. Um, today we had a great day. Um, good communication all across the board. You know, guys were competing. Uh, Matthew Jackson had a, uh, got his hands on the ball a couple of times, so that's what we're looking for as a defense. The most change you've dealt with, obviously, not just new personnel, but then people rolling in and out. Yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of change. Um, but, you know, change is exciting. Um, change is everyone feels it. Um, a lot of guys in the room see, you know, opportunity to be on the field. Um, Coach Denard Wilson, you know, says he's going to put the best players on the field. And um, if you're showing out, um, even if you're not a starter, he's going to find, you know, find a way to get you on the field. When you have so many guys, like, rotating in next to you, you know, Jamal, Elijah, sometimes, you know, other guys as well, like, does it make it more difficult to, like, get that chemistry and just playing off of each other as much? Um, no, I wouldn't say that because, you know, the standard is a standard. Um, you know, my communication um, is always trying to be as, as high as possible so I can help the guy next to me. It doesn't matter really who's there. Um, I'm trying to just help the guy at corner, and if whoever's in that safety, you know, we're communicating the same way I would if, you know, there's a starter out there all the time. What impressions maybe did you have of Jamal Adams before he came here and, and you know, just in the few days he's been here? What was your impressions of him? Uh, I'm great. I mean, great impressions. Um, I mean, I was a big fan of him when I was younger. I've um, always been a fan of him, you know, everywhere he's been at. And I'm, I'm just grateful that he's on our team now. Um, I know he's like, taught me a lot of things so far this first couple of days or weeks that he's been here. Um, so I'm continuing to learn from him and hopefully, you know, I can teach him some things as well. You've been back there with some different corners with. Cheeto out and Snead on a management plan. How how's the communication been and how's the play been with guys like Brownlee and Avery and Farley that are getting those reps now? Oh, it's been good. I mean, those guys are improving um, each day. You know, they they might make a mistake, but the next day they correct it and um, they're getting hands on balls and they're they're guarding some you know good receivers that we have on offense. So, I mean, the standard is the standard. The expectation doesn't fall off just because you know Snead or Cheeto might be taking uh, a, a practice off. So. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about you know guys coming in and stepping up and competing. Coaches always say that this is when the real evaluation begins when Pats come on and you play real football. What as a player do you start to learn about the guys around you? Um, you find out you know who loves the ball. You find out who's not going to shy away from contact. Um, who's going to put their nose on the ball? Um, you know who's going to put their body on the line for the team. And um, a, lot, a lot of guys you know they're fast. When you know we got just the underwear Olympics, we like to call it. Um, but you know when the pads come on, you can see who slows down. But you know things just intensi in intensifies, and technique is just more glaring. So much talk about the Denard wants aggression, wants physicality. Do you think some of that spilled over and was part of the reason for uh, some of the chippiness today? Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, he's not trying to have us fight out there. That, that's not what you know we mean by aggressive. Uh, we try to keep it uh, in between the lines. But I mean, yeah, we we want to have energy. Um, and when that happens, we got to be able to, you know, take it to the edge, and then we got to have guys be able to pull each other back because you know we are trying to protect the team. Do you guys practice any differently under this coach's staff compared to the last in terms of that physicality or how far they want you to go in certain situations? Um, I mean, even I mean, last year Rays would even say take it to to the edge and pull each other back. So I mean, I think it's not really about. I think it's just the culture we have. I mean, it's just about guys buying into, you know, what we're trying to play here, the style of football we're trying to play. Um, I think that's that's a little different than last year. What do you think about Jarvis Brownlee so far, just the way he plays and maybe he approaches things, you know, in the locker room? Um, he's been he's been great. I mean, he's been improving. He's been aggressive. Um, every day he's coming out and competing, and that's that's really what you look for with a young guy is just coming out competing. If you even if you make a mistake, you know, you just still coming back, learn from it, and just try to improve. Like more is being asked of you in particular this season. Um, I mean, I, I hope so. I hope they ask more of me. Uh, I'm taking it upon myself as an individual to, you know, ask more of myself. So, I mean, if they're asking for that behind closed doors, or they come to me asking for that, you know, that's kind of just something that I'm also putting on myself is to, you know, find a way to do more, whether that's in the locker room or on the field as well. Yeah, you got your shot at the green dot yet? Got your shot at the green dot yet? Uh, no, I haven't got my shot at the green dot yet. Note though, with the leadership, and I know that's something you always want to get to the next level. Like you right. said, 
in your eyes, so what is that? Because you see like the vocal leadership with Jeffrey Simmons mm -hmm. and even a Jamal Adams coming in. Yeah. What what does your leadership look like? Yeah. I think it's I think it's both vocal and by just demonstrating by by coming in and you know bringing guys together and to meet and without the coaches there you know having that uh, time with the guys without having coaches there or just doing things that, that the young guys can see me do whether it's my routine um, giving them little tidbits on you know what they should do with hydration recovery you know what I mean just leading them and trying to be that you know a, a little a big brother to them even though I'm not much older than a lot of guys but just helping them out the best I can. Phil, what would you say is the general tone that you personally want us to set for the defense? Um, I want to set an you know, aggressive and high, high intensity tone. You know, every time I'm out there, I want guys to look at me and see me flying around and be like, all right, well, why can't I fly around like Hook? And if vice versa. And then when you look at Jeffrey Simmons and how he is, you know, talking, you know, all the yeah. stuff with, with him, like how much do you guys feed off of that? Yeah, when we feed off him, because before he does the talking, he makes the play first. So that's the main thing. He's not just talking and then. That's it. You know, he's he's walking the walk as well. You see the better receivers in the game these days. Not a lot, thirty and over. DeAndre Hopkins, thirty-two now, and still obviously putting up big numbers. Is there a thing or two in, in your mind that that helps him, you know, be productive more than than a lot of receivers are? Um, I think his knowledge of the game, the way he takes care of his body, his conditioning. Um, I mean, you couldn't tell he was over 30 years old, the way he plays and the way he can run routes and catch the ball and how, and how physical he is. So, I mean, I don't think really age is really um, um, age is a factor. It's really just about how, how well you take care of yourself. Are there any specific players that have had success at the safety position in previous Denard systems that you've watched, like Kyle Hamilton, for example? Yeah, I mean, we watched uh, some Kyle Hamilton uh, highlights just from, you know, the install. Um, Geno Stone was over there. That's also a friend of mine. So I talked to him about, you know, his play, what he liked about, you know, playing with the system as well. So there's been a couple of safeties that I would look at and also Marcus, uh, Marcus Williams as well. Uh, guardian cap, uh, what are your thoughts on wearing that out here? I haven't had any issues with it. I mean, I haven't, it hasn't gotten my way of doing anything. So it hasn't really bothered me. Any consideration to wearing it on game day? I probably won't wear it on game day, but it's been good in practice so far. Hey, I appreciate, appreciate you. you.